All right, welcome everybody to Dave Cooper Live, where we showcase the people, the products, and the processes helping us all to build it better. Yes, we're a little bit late today, but better late than never. We're coming off a whirlwind trip across this country. And I am excited to be here today because we are just back from Las Vegas, the International Builders Show, but also advancing prefabrication which took place in denver colorado and i know just like the rest of us you're wondering why are there two shows on top of each other two incredibly transformative shows on top of each other at the same time well it's water under the bridge at this point but we are going to fill you in on today and what we saw what we learned who we met who we caught up with but first, can't do any of this without a word from our sponsor. So stay tuned. We got some video to show you. We got some conversation to show you. I'm Dave Cooper. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Stream Modular, the only logistics company you need to transport your mods, pods, and panels. Our friends at Stream Modular are investing $50 million over the next 25 years to build the technology, solutions, and trailers needed to handle and transport the projects of today and meet the demands of tomorrow. Reach out to their team at StreamModular.com to discuss your next project. CombiLift is the largest global global manufacturer of multi-directional forklifts and straddle carriers. A leader in long load handling solutions offering a free warehouse and site optimization design service. CombiLift helps companies of all sizes and from every industry maximize the capacity, safety, and efficiency of their warehouse and storage facilities. A big thank you to Paul Short and the team at CombiLift for helping us all to build it better. Visit them at combilift.com. Brave Control Solutions, where offsite manufacturing systems that do more than just improve productivity. They have a unique approach to industrialized construction, a lineup of flexible automation systems specifically designed for the construction industry and powered by CAD to Fab and Turnkey Solutions for 3D volumetric assembly, structural insulated panels, finished wall assemblies, MEP component processing, assembly, kitting, and storage. Learn more at thinkbrave.com. All right, everybody, listen, we are back from the International uh, Builders Show and Advancing Prefab. So thank you so much for joining us today. And if you are traveling at any of those events or like us, all of those events, well, we hope you made it home safely uh, and hope you got some rest and the jet lag has settled down. But hopefully also you're feeling recharged, you're feeling energized, and you're feeling inspired. We're going to walk you through a couple of the big things that we saw at the International Builders Show. So stay tuned, but I want to highlight a few things here, and then we'll get into some of those interviews. So we're going to talk about the International Builders Show first. 80th NAHB show. It was the large, it is the largest annual light construction show in the world, and it had milestone attendances this year. There were over a hundred countries attending, highest level since 2009. There was a thousand eight hundred exhibitors, including eight hundred new exhibitors. The size of the show floor increased nearly twelve percent from 2023. That's over 1 million square feet of exhibition space. There was 120 educational sessions, artificial intelligence, building technology, research, and trends. And I got to go tour the new American home that showcased the latest trends and innovation in home building. And I have to tell you, it was spectacular. So with that said, that home was actually built by SunWest Custom Homes, scenic views in Las Vegas, has a resort lifestyle feel to it. And I'm not kidding. The bathroom itself was bigger than probably my entire first floor of the house. But on top of that, it was an incredible location and they really hit it out of the park with all the upgrades and everything they added to it. In fact, 
We posted a video. You can go see that on our YouTube calendar if you want to see inside the new American home. So mark your calendars. 2025 is coming right up uh, in Las Vegas. The International Builders Show does return February 25th through the 27th. So all of you other trade shows out there, pay attention so I can enjoy all the shows just like everybody else because we all deserve the opportunities to come and learn from each and every one of you. All right, let's talk about the super session. I was able to be on the big stage this year. When I say big stage here, let me give you a little glimpse of what that looked like. This room had over a 1,000 people in it, and yes, that is yours truly standing up on stage there, and I was having a blast. We had the launch. The can't miss new products, that's right, and technology at IBS. This was a 90-minute session, and we covered everything from cutting-edge building materials to revolutionary software and tools. And we did it in a fun way. Each presenter only had four minutes on stage to present their idea. If they didn't, the stage lit up in red lights and you heard a buzzer. And then they had to slowly work their way off of the stage. So with that said, we got to see companies like Apisco. And oh, who's Apisco? Well, that's 3D printing technology. Sluter Systems, Kelby was up there. They had a lighted shower niche, which was kind of cool. But let's get into the real wood here. Or, or is it? Inventwood was up there. Job site codes, Timber HP, Builder Pad, Renovate Robotics, who took the show. I'm going to show you all of these in just a moment here. Biltzer and so many others were on that stage. It takes a lot of guts to get in front of a thousand people. Even yours truly gets nervous when I get up there and get the opportunity to showcase all these things. However, we also had the opportunity to be in the DuPont booth with our good friend, Laura Dwyer. That's right, Laura Dwyer, who is leading up a lot of the innovation conversations at DuPont. She travels around the factories, and she was a past chair of the uh, Building Systems Council. I almost got all messed up. NAHB, BSC, Building Systems Council. She is in it to win it. And then there's yours truly afterwards. I was sitting down having a conversation with some people that had more and more questions. Heck, at one point, I was even asked to run for president. That ain't happening. But it was fun nonetheless. All right, here's a quick journey. And when I say quick, we're going to walk you through the startup zone. And you're going to see a few of these companies that we thought were pretty spectacular and you should know about. So here it is. Enjoy. And on the on the, the front end solution right. for the builder to be able to communicate with their clients, with project managers, people that are you know part of the, of the construction construction process. So everything from scheduling to selection management to our bread and butter is really the communication right. and uh, the, and really a, a mobile first approach. So having a native mobile app where the project manager can do job site documentation, do photos, do video updates, right. and keep everybody in the loop that needs to be involved in the process. Keep everybody in sync. Right. So. Builder pad, the, the 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 selling point here, because there's other companies that do similar stuff, is that it's a mobile first. Explain right. what that means, because I think that's so, what everybody has to understand. Yeah, so it's it's a native mobile app, which means that you can leverage like things like push notifications, oh, right? Yeah. And so when uh, you know there's a selection item that needs to be, uh, we need to send out a reminder to the client, hey, you need to go and and you know approve this item. Right, right. You know they can get that alert. Or if there's a schedule item that just got completed, everybody is in the know. Or if there's a a, a delay in the schedule, everybody is in unison. And you're not sending voicemails and text messages and, and emails. Everything is done in what we call our activity feed, which sure. is almost like a social media, Facebook type of, of feed where you can at mention people and, and pull people into conversations yep. and have threaded conversations and you know like things and comments and just right, makes right. that more of a, a more modern experience with people, uh, how they like to communicate. You're meeting people where they're at. I mean, this is what we're using all over the place right. now, right? Yeah. And I think right. that everybody's comfortable with this. Now. Right, yeah. right. And it's and a younger generation, right? That's as long as, like, is it, do they call it a UI interface on a phone? As long as the interface sure. is yeah. user friendly, that's, that's the right. big thing, right? Yeah, exactly, yep. Perfect, perfect, yep. perfect. So tell me a little bit about where this started and how this all came about. So I was in construction for over 20 years had a, as a material supplier. Yeah. Um, and I live across the street from Mark Thompson. He's always been in software. Um, 
Mark built a custom home a few years ago and we were having beers around the campfire and he said, man, this is a crazy experience. Like I'm getting all these texts and emails and pictures of invoices and I don't know what's going on. I, no job progress photos. Right. I think I want to build a solution. I had experience with other solutions that were in the market. So we kind of put our heads together and that's how BuilderPad was born. And here we are. Here, here we are. are. Here we are. Two in and a half years later. So. In Vegas. So that's where it is. Yeah. Talk to us a little, about, a little bit about who your customers are and, and, you know, are you guys growing pretty good? Yeah, we are. Um, thanks to the show, obviously, we've had a great turnout. Um, our clients are small to medium-sized home builders, custom re builders, remodelers. That's who my bread and butter was with with my previous yeah. business. Um, we're not an ERP solution trying to go after the big whales. Sure. Um, so we're really trying to give an affordable solution for a smaller home builder or remodeler and with very, very intuitive design and ease of use. Yep, so yep. talk to me, does it like store documents yes. and, and all yeah. that, so pictures, yep. photos? Everything on a per job basis. Yep. So you have your schedule, your selections, you've got file cabinet, all the photographs, all your job site documentation, and there's permissions on who can see what, so right, you have complete right. control over, over the, and it's on a per job level. So yeah, yeah. if you want to see a picture of the job, the Williams job from last week, just open up Williams, go to your photo gallery, and you can see all the pictures from last week. Yep. So it's an affordable option. So yep. when you say a per job, is that on the pricing as well? So yeah, we how, have how an, does that in, work? Walk in tranches, so it's like one ninety nine up to three jobs, two right. ninety nine up to fifteen, and, go, and so on and so active forth. Projects. Active projects. Yep. You yep. can archive projects that aren't active anymore. Good. They don't count against your usage. And do I get to keep all my own data? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And all the customers' data is secure, all yep. that fun all stuff. stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. All that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever we talked about that you want everybody to know before we moved on. Oh, ma'am. The lifetime deal? Should I say something about that? Yeah, well, lifetime first, deal. We have a oh, so right here, for the show attendees. <laughs> we have a lifetime deal. It's a one-time two thousand dollar license, and you'll use it for the rest of your life. We want early adopters, um, and then we have some webinar stuff coming up uh, right. in the next couple weeks that we would love for everybody to attend to learn more about the product. And where do they find the webinars? Um, from our website, and if we scan your badge, we'll obviously send you um, send you alerts about yeah, that as yeah, well. Yeah. So. Yeah, so Timber HP is a, a manufacturing facility that started up just the past couple of years that uh, is based in Madison, Maine. Yeah. Uh, we've taken over a uh, retired paper mill. We've put our equipment into that facility. Right. Uh, bringing back uh, jobs in the community, economic revitalization, lots of layers to the story. Sure. But utilizing the forest products, the waste products from yeah. other uh, parts of the industry, uh, you know, sustainable harvesting, pine mills, kiln dried lumber right, mills, right. all of that waste product, that material, those chips, are what used to go to the mills. That uh, is uh, readily abundant in our state, yeah, same yeah. for Michigan, Wisconsin, Pacific Northwest. Right, right. And we can turn that into a bat product, like you got there in yep. your hand, a blown product, which yeah. would be uh, essentially a cellulose based product, so attics, yep. walls. Yeah. Also in the cavity, and then we're just on the on the cusp of uh, rolling out our board product, yeah, and yeah. so that's a higher density material. Right. And in heating climates up yeah. in the north, that would be a continuous exterior. Continuous so, exterior. Durable, rigid, uh, really good R value right. in all the products, and it's kind of exciting because everybody comes up and they say, "Well, does it burn?" And we got the video running right, right there. Right. Uh, we, we add borates, we treat that like you would with cellulose for that, sure. for the bat, and we get a class A fire resistance that'll smolder so and exhaust. Here's what I love about this product, right? This product is used all throughout Europe already. Correct. You are finally bringing it to the United States for this market. Yeah. So it's, it's, nothing, it's not really a brand new, your process is new here in the States and how you're doing it, Correct. but the product itself is one of the most used product in home building throughout Europe because of its, you know, the, the, the sustainability, Absolutely. the low carbon footprint, the recyclability yeah. of it, uh, the fact that you would think it's burned, but it doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. kind of like trying to start a big log, one, you know, one log at a time. It just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. So yeah. 20, almost 25 years in Europe. I mean, it's a good 25 long years. track record. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and it's been real exciting. I, uh, great opportunity covering the Northeast, the mid Atlantic out to the Ohio River right, Valley. Right. And of course, we're getting people uh, asking all the way out to the West Coast. It's a little premium with the shipping, but we'll right, get right. it there if that, it. that's it. what it comes to. Well, listen, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, you can uh, find information, info at timberhp.com. Perfect.
Hang on. So basically what Cannabill does is it lets you put in an address anywhere, any parcel in the United States, see that address, and if you're a home builder, a shed builder, right. pool builder, you can place that pool or house or ADU in the backyard, automatically check appliance, check costs. So we're pretty excited to be here in the show and speaking to people like yourself, Dave, and showing, yeah, yeah. showing everyone what we do. What's great about this is, Tim, you come from the home building industry, you cut your teeth in this industry, and like a lot of us, you got frustrated. Yep. You got frustrated on how we were doing it. And like, I don't, how many pints of beer did you have when you said, I'm doing something about this? Because this is a big undertaking. 100%. Walk us through the, how this works. So I'm a homeowner, I can sit, or a builder or whatever. I can yep. sit at home, I can search land. You guys have collected all that data all the mapping, yep. and then I can place a house or a box or whatever I want, and it's gonna build that for me? Exactly, so right now, if you're thinking about building a pool or a house or an ADU, you can imagine you'll probably call a contractor, you'll wait until next week until they could come see you, they're gonna go speak to an architect and back and forth. Or you can go to canalbuild.com, put the address in, similar to what you're seeing in the back screen there, place an ADU, automatically check the compliance, move it around in a visual way so your end consumer, so our clients are contractors, their clients can see exactly what they're going to get anywhere in the US straight away in a visual format. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you say check compliance. So are you telling me this will help me understand what my setbacks are, height regulations? 100%. You know, my eave overhangs, everything that I need to know about? Yes, and you don't even need surveyors. So you've got topography lines. You can see what the site cost is going to be without even stepping foot on site. So imagine someone calls up. You're able to go on a Zoom session if you wanted to, see their property straight away in a visual way in 3D, and actually show, yes, it does comply. So our clients include the likes of Boxable, we've got pretty much every ADU company in California, San Juan Pools across right. the nation, and you can even embed our technology on your website, so end consumers can go to San Juan Pools or Blue Haven Pools right now. So I can white Boxable. label is what you're saying? Exactly. And With then my own info. And then we're empowering our clients, contractors around the world, especially in the US, to be able to better sell quicker, and then the sooner you can do it quicker, it turns into a product. Right, so right. they're able to sell a lot more, a lot faster, and consumers can see what they're getting straight away. What's the next generation of this? You guys are already working on it? We're gonna see AI in it and all that? Or? <laughs> already the next generation. <laughs> so, no, look, Why not? We're, we're always working tirelessly, and we're, we're heavily funded, we're growing quite rapidly. And the, the next move is to just keep on doing what we're doing because I think we are cutting edge. Yeah. And the sooner we can start removing those compliance hurdles, which is you know, a big drama for sure. a lot of contractors, I think the better. And the more we can do that in a visual and simple way that us contractors can right, do, right. all the better. Yeah. So that's what can I do. Remember, tell me a little bit about who you are, what Kubi's all about. And we'll go from yeah, there. Thanks, and uh, appreciate you putting this together. It's yeah, always fun. Always. Uh, we design, we develop, we deploy mobile micro factories. We're now 350,000 engineering hours into this journey. Simply put, our product is the factory. We copy and paste that. We partner with home builders. We enable them to reduce their skilled labor by a factor of 10, which thereby reduces costs. So, by a factor of 10, reducing costs. So, all right. This is like a pop-up factory, right? It's mobile. So if I'm a developer, I can basically say, you know what, instead of outsourcing here and outsourcing here, I can go to Kubi, and Kubi's going to set me up my own production line right at my site. Is that the best way to say it? Pretty much. So we locally partner. It could be a home builder. We could partner with a family office, a private equity group, but our factories are low capex. Yep. We set them up in a region with a local operating partner. Think like McDonald's. You know, you don't have to know what we know to be able to operate them. Right. And then we get to produce everything that goes into a home, and then you get to be the beneficiary of that if you're a home builder. And so the product itself, does the, who, who maintains ownership? Is it leased, or is it all part of a bigger agreement on how you develop? And I'm sure it's all over the place. It's fluid, yeah. Yeah. It's fluid. Sometimes folks on these outright, and it looks like a license. Sometimes we co-GP uh, with JV agreements. It's, right. it's a wide gamut. And so where are you guys based out of? We're typically in New York and we set up massive infrastructure in Eastern Europe where we're a team of about 150 engineers now. Yeah, and are, are you seeing a lot of adoption of this technology here in the States? Yeah, yeah. We, we get, I'd say, inbound every 15 minutes. It's either someone wants a factory, someone wants to build a home using our yeah. factory. So, But we have to move slow. It's a very hard thing that we're, we're trying to execute because everything is full stack. All the hardware, all the software, it's all ours. So, I mean, is it air blowing through these? Like, so I tell, look, it looks so, like a big tent, right? It's not like a tennis court if you play tennis. It's right. not a pressurized inflatable structure. It's okay. a pneumonic air dome, essentially. So there's no pressure on the inside. That's where you can keep the doors wide open. 
Uh, we essentially containerize a factory, put our machines inside of them, deploy an assembly line. Right? Your site. And so if I wanted to do this, what would be the process? I reach out to you guys, you become part of my team to help me understand what's going to need to happen for Kubi to show up and do their thing. Walk me through yeah. the process. I'm a developer and I want to build 10,000 homes. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Not always is it the case that the folks who partner with are the off-taker that build the homes. Yep. It could just be Bob Smith that wants an operating right. profitable manufacturing business. But you would reach out to us, we would talk, and we would figure out how to fund the factory. It's yeah. a lot less than people think, and that's part of our moat. And that's part of the moat. Can you say, anybody using you now that you can talk about? We have two contracts right now that we're, we're launching factories with, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, right. and it'll be public soon. How long have you guys been around now? In business, in development and business. That's a lot of engineering hours. So. Five years unofficially. Five years unofficially. Three and a half years officially. Yep, yep. And when you as a developer send us a request, when you as a developer send us a request, we will send to you as a number for our, for our account. Oh, they don't really guys. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. What's the best way for everybody to get a hold of you guys to check out more about what you have going on? I think our website, just kubitechnologies.com. That's yeah. the most. But tell us a little bit about BAMCore. Bamboo mm -hmm. is a hint. Yeah, so our wall systems use bamboo, eucalyptus, and wood. Yeah. Uh, we make custom fabricated panelized wall systems okay. that are load-bearing panels. So what you're seeing now is a size-down mock-up of our panels. That's uh, wood and bamboo with a lap joint. Got so yeah. you can see on this larger assembly, we've got two load-bearing panels. Right with uh, dimensional lumber in between. So because the exterior and interior, interior panel take that structural load, yep. there's a very low amount of dimensional framing in the wall cavity. So we're bringing down the framing factor to as low as 6.7%. Because bamboo is so strong, I mean, mm -hmm. what, what, what's making that happen that would be different than a normal structure that we've used? Yeah, absolutely. So it's the thickness of our panels. The bamboo adds a level of stiffness to yep. the panels that uh, allow us to go vertical. We're code sure. compliant up to five stories. Yeah. Let me see, I don't know if you can see that, Vince, or, right? Yep. So, so you set up to five stories mm -hmm. vertical, mm -hmm. right? T typical wood frame construction code. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Got it, got it, got it. Let's talk about the attributes of it. What's so great about it? Why, why do this versus traditional lumber? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're seeing a higher insulative value. Um, also, our construction technology is industrialized. So we're embedding all of the structure, the yeah. MEP into our wall system. Sure. It's cut out of the panels. So on site, you know, we use a alphanumeric numbering system on each panel. You know exactly where it goes. Right. You know where the structure is, the MEP in that wall. So uh, it allows for quick builds. Like you can see behind right. us, this is a yeah 2,200 square foot build. A lot of visitors to site that day, but there's actually just five crew members and they built all of the load bearing walls in three and a half hours. In three and a half hours, so everything's cut to precision in place. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. what about MEPs? Like, so the markouts, the, the cutouts you can see are all there for the MEPs. Mm -hmm. Is there the future of putting MEPs built in in the manufacturing process? Not, not at this point, not yet. Not yet. Uh, so in development, we have also a thinner wall assembly okay. with a thinner interior panel where right. load bearings on the exterior. That allows interior panels to be removed and get into that wall cavity entirely. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. perfect, perfect. Theo, where can people get a hold of you guys? BAMCore.com. Check us out. Uh, we've also got a great professional resources page with details. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what Biltzer does. Yeah. Hi, my name is Bridget McGuire. I'm CEO and co-founder of Biltzer, the digital tool for new home builders and their customers. Biltzer essentially connects the builder to their customers while creating the customer experience and keeping them in the know at all times, from prospecting, through home buying, through home ownership, your customers will always know what's happening with their home at all times. So is the customer the is so is the end user the customer of Builder? That's yeah. where that so the, the builder already has to have you know yep. the process in place. Yep. So I'm a consumer, I'm sitting at home, I'm like, you know, I'm thinking I want to build something, buy something, do whatever. Yeah. Walk me through what that process looks like. Sure, yeah. So so, so home builder home builders download Builder, right? So they're on the platform. Once they have a new registrant, that customer now has access to Builtzer, okay. which then links them to that builder profile. That builder profile is loaded with all information, home designs, communities, portfolio items, new home pricing, yeah. and through that process, they're always updated. Then they become a buyer. They continue on in their journey with Builtzer, and, and they, they as a consumer have that mobile app to keep right. them in the know at all times at their fingertips. I love it, I love yeah. it. How's the show been for you so far? It's been great, it's exciting, it's busy. It's it a good thing. Busy, yeah. Right? 
Yeah. There's over a million square feet of space, and we've Crazy. literally only showed you a couple, not even 100,000 of it. Yeah. Not even, not even 10,000 of yeah, it. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, we're lucky to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how, how's, been, how's the market been for you? It's been good. We just got a, a beta testing. Okay. So we're just launching into the marketplace. So we're right. accepting new home builders on the platform now. Ideal size or medium to small size builders. Um, so yeah, so we're getting there. We're getting there. As a builder, mm -hmm. that communication between, you know, between the builder and the end user or my client can always have those rocky road areas, yeah. right? There's this up and down graph that shows they're happy, they're sad, they're mad, they're yeah. happy, right? You know, and what you guys are doing is kind of taking that and smoothing it out is what I'm hearing. Exactly, yeah, and it actually comes down to also the representatives, right? So builders work with a lot of people who to sell their homes. So right. this creates consistency from agent to agent, or representative to representative, okay. with a new home buying experience from that builder. So whether you're working with a realtor or a home builder rep, you're going to have that same experience from that builder, customer to customer. Customer to customer. Yep. Awesome. So how do people get a hold of you? Um, you can find us on LinkedIn, which is awesome, or www.builtzer.com. Thank you. Josh, what's hey, up, man? Good to see you, Dave. Good to see you yes, as yes. well. Here, step Thank over you. on this yes, side. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, what are you, you going to hit me a piece? That doesn't look like metal. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 100% wood. 100% wow. wood. Yeah. That's 100% wood. 100% wood, yeah. That so this is dense. densified. It is densified yeah. wood. So we are looking to compete against steel. You and this are is looking to compete against we, steel. We are, yeah. All right. For for a number of reasons, both right. in terms of performance and the sustainability. Yeah. But feel feel this. Which is heavier? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's heavy. This is too. this is heavy. Yes. yes. That yeah. is. That is. Yeah. I, I should go to the gym. Is what you say. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at over there for? All right. So walk me through what you guys have done. Give us the showdown. Sure. Josh, you, sure. By the way, Josh was also on stage this morning. Yes. Yeah, so Inventwood is an innovator of advanced wood materials. We're looking to basically imbue regular wood with incredible properties. Yeah. So our first to market uh, material is called metal wood. It's extremely strong, about 50% stronger yeah. than the tensile strength of structural steel. Yeah. And, and at the same time, six times lighter. So incredible benefits, incredibly wow. sustainable as well. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, a fraction of the energy to produce. You know, I yeah. look at this and know what I think. I think there's a great market for like the baseball industry. <laughs> yeah, we, right? You're not, we allowed have, use wood, you're not allowed to use metal bats exactly, at the pros, exactly, yeah. but if somebody made a bat out of this, what do you do? We actually, we yeah. were contacted oh, really? by a pro baseball team, yeah. an MLB yeah. uh, baseball team, and they determined actually that metal wood would give an unfair advantage. So they, we weren't able to it use it. So dense. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we we we're looking at it. We we thought of that as well. So yeah, we would tell, love to tell do. me a little bit about what your product line is right now. For if I want to build, yeah. you know, am I buying? Am I am I building a steel beam out of wood? Yeah, or not what, yet. What, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're we're looking to get in the market in a number of ways. So for right. our first uh, applications are going to be really fast to market right. opportunities. So we're we're talking to retailers to replace shelving. Okay. We're talking, there's a, a company that wants to use us for pens, believe it or not. So that's going to be our first deployment in the market. Right. And then we're looking at some of more uh, ancillary um, applications in the, in the built environment. Yeah, yeah. Things like cladding and fir finishings and things like that. So a number of, of different applications. And then we want to get into the structural space. So this is really, this is the end game here. Got it, is got to it. replace steel I-beams with a metal wood equivalent. What do you do to this to make it as strong as metal? I mean, I, yeah. listen, you're going to yeah. geek out on all the science yeah. stuff and, <laughs> and all the you know, chemical changes. <laughs> but I mean, just in layman's terms, yeah. You know, what are you doing to the wood? Sure. And does it does it stay sustainable? It does. It does. So what we're doing, and I'm fortunately I'm not a technical guy either, so don't worry. Um, basically, what we're doing is densifying the wood. So a lot of wood is empty space. Right. So if you take a regular piece of wood, and this has to do with as the tree is growing, it needs to send nutrients basically up and down the tree. But when it comes to wood, we want it to be as dense as possible. Yeah, yeah. So we're just using a lot of heat and a lot of pressure after a chemical treatment that basically you know, solves right, everything right, at this right, point. Right. Yeah. Does it make it harder to burn and all that other stuff? It does, do it does. So it makes it a lot more durable. Okay. Because it's so dense, right. basically there's no oxygen. So if you tried to light this on fire, it would just go out right away. And the same goes right. for like termites and fungus. Right, they just right. can't get into it. 
So it's incredibly durable. So it's like incredibly. taking a piece of foam and then squishing it down to nothing. It's not soft anymore. Right, I right, mean, exactly. It's incredible. Term, right? Exactly, yeah, it's incredibly dense. It's, it's incredibly, incredibly dense. dense. Yeah. Josh, how do, how do people get a hold of you, support you, get a, hold, yeah, get so a bat from you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're at inventwood.com. Come check us out. We are growing rapidly. We are looking for to build a community, looking for folks that are like-minded, that really want to see alternatives in the material space. So. Because Renovate Robotics, right, who actually won this morning's show, by the way, they got the IBS launch. Thing. But what I wanted to say is last year, your company was on the same stage doing the same things, and Bob built. I'll give him a mic. Well, we don't really want to hear him, do we? I mean, yeah, that's kind of dangerous now. And like, how is, much time do you guys I have? I mean, you realize we'll be here for a while. She's just watching the viewer count just decrease right now. That's so sad. But yeah. Do, just go ahead and tell everybody who Bot Build is so real quick. So you guys are talking. We build it. homes with robots. And so what we're really trying to do is innovate in construction by taking two-dimensional plans, turn them into three-dimensional data, and turn that into robots that build themselves. Yeah. And the reason I'm here is because I'm checking out Renovate Robotics. We're friends with these guys. Uh, they have invented something that I feel very personally is a good thing. My father was a roofer to get through medical school, and he says that I exist because he refused to be the top plate guy because he didn't want to blow off, and these guys are solving that problem. So I just want to talk to them and see how we can yeah, help bring yeah, robots yeah. to the roof. Well, that's it. Hey, listen, you guys are doing the framing stuff, but you're not laying shingles and taking all the hazard out of being on a roof. Come on over on this side here. Yeah, Let's thanks. take this, Andrew, back. Back in the limelight again. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about who you guys are. And I want to know how this idea came about. I say this to everybody. Like, it, it typically somebody says, well, we were at the pub. And I was like, I'm tired of this. It's cold and slick on a roof. Or somebody got hurt. Yeah. How, did, how did you come up with this? Yeah, so my background is all in robotics and automation. Yeah. But my family is the construction family. So my dad ran a general contractor. My cousins and uncles are concrete workers and roofers and okay. plumbers. Um, and the idea came to me when I bought a house. I had to replace the roof. And um, all the contractors were booked out. There's a small army of people that show up in this really dangerous work. Right. And so I started talking to my cousin. I said, I bet we can build a robot that can do this safer, faster, cheaper. And here we are a couple of years later actually making it happen. That's how it all came about. That's how it came about, yeah. How, so how do you get the, I, I got it. How do you get the robot on the roof? Yeah, so Excuse we, me. yeah. So we have a, um, a modified <laughs> ladder lift. Yeah. Um, so same tools that, that roofing contractors are already familiar with. It raises the robot up to the eave, and then you connect the, um, the to the anchor points, and you're kind of off to the races from there. Really? So yeah. everything just literally is self-contained when you have your system on how to get it up there. You don't need big cranes showing up or anything? Nope. Everything shows up in the back of a pickup truck, and then you're set up within 30 minutes, and then it's all automated from there. It reads in the data from an Eagle View or a Hover report, and um, yeah, it's all automated, yeah. All right, so here I have this robot. It's just because, you know, the, the average roofer out there is going to be saying, all right, how does this thing not go off the side? Yeah. Walk me through. So here, I want to I want to incorporate this in. Yeah. Do I need a special software for from my design or my architect? How does this plug and play into my yeah. job site? So Eagle View is already a very common software that contractors use. Yep. Um, so it takes in an Eagle View uh, roof report. Yep. It takes all those dimensions, and then um, you know we attach the robot to the roof with right. the same anchoring technology that a roofer ties off to. Okay. And so um, right. it's it's anchored to the roof, it uses all that data, and um, yeah, and so it's no no new tools, no new software, no right. new processes. Um, yeah, does that answer, does that answer it, questions? Know, it does, yeah. it does answer it. So do I have to buy one of these? Can I lease it from my local, you know, yeah. uh, hardware company? Like how, how does this work? So right now we are, um, we're going to market as a subcontractor. Yeah. And so we'll be on site, partnered with roofing contractors with our crews running the robot. Yep. Um, as we demonstrate the productivity, we'll train up those contractors to use the robots themselves, yep. and then we'll start leasing the robots to them, either on like a per week or a by the square foot right. uh, model. And so it's that usage type model, yeah. So how, so. how much do you have out there right now? Do you have these on yeah. job sites working with people? So right now we are, um, finishing up our testing in the lab and we'll be doing the first pilot projects in May in, May? in the Northeast, yeah. In the so, Northeast? Yeah. On the cold, slippy roof. Yeah. We're in the Northeast, tell us. Uh, so we'll likely start in New Jersey, but maybe Connecticut. Yeah, New somewhere Jersey. in there. Yeah. There you go, Jen will be happy about that. I don't know though. Well listen, if you could please just include us when you're gonna do that, because I want to be there and yeah. see it. So I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that you guys, uh, you won. Yeah, we that did. That was a voter's choice, so it was amazing. So, 
Thanks so much. Thanks I for coming I appreciate by. you very much, yeah. Andrew. Thanks for everything you're doing. All right, we're going to head around on this side. Product. They make codes cool. I'm going to let them tell you how. <laughs> yeah, so we've, uh, in essence, digitalized the spec book. So uh, if you're familiar with building, which all of you are, you've probably seen something like this on the job site. It's your spec book that's filled with paper files that are used by those trades to finish the homes. They go missing, they get dirty, they're always outdated. So what we've done is we've moved everything to a QR code and now it's all digitally based. So those trades on the job site, they just pull out their cell phone, right, scan right. the QR code and they have access to everything they need, every house or every project in the house or every file and they're always up to date. So basement, no, bath, bedroom, bunk room, it's just up there and they click on it and they know what, what their QR. Exactly, and once they're in, they don't need to find another QR code. It's all web-based, so you can send a link right. by a text message. Right. Once you're into one of those QR codes, you have access to every file for the whole house. When I sign up, do I get this in the mail? You absolutely can have a fire starter. It says spec book fire starter kit. So this is how you burn the code book and you turn digital. Man, you know how many times I had to sit there and argue with a building inspector back in the day. That's not the code, you know. <laughs> and now we can just type it in is what you're saying. You can find the code right off there. Well, it's, it's more for the specs for the house that's being built. So all of the design files, the appliance files, all that stuff. And you can put your, uh, your um, it's your uh, what am I looking for? Your your code files in there, your SWIP files. Well, that's files. what it is. When you think about exhaust fans on different appliances, they're all different, all different lengths, turns, what you're allowed to do. That has all the codes already built in it, so I just exactly. search it, it's there. It's in there, ready to go. And you don't have to worry about it. Absolutely. How's the show been for you? It's been awesome, great show. Yeah. Thanks for hosting this morning. It was an awesome uh, event yeah, earlier yeah. this morning, and a lot of good traffic here in the startup zone, a lot of great questions. I mean, there's a lot of traffic, like, like, they don't even see the camera, there's so many people watching. Yeah, there's a lot of people, it's We got a lot of people doing this. So if people want to get involved and use this, What's the process there? You know, how, how, what are the fees? Is it affordable? Can I use it as a small builder, big builder? How does it work? Absolutely. So we have three different tiers. You go to jobsitecodes.com, yep. go into our pricing section. Right. We have a single homeowner builder plan that's in essence for your single homeowner builders. Yep. It's a one single license, one project. The next one is our build plan. It's for five admin licenses. Okay. That gets you unlimited projects. You can build as many as you want and right, just right. five admins. Our pro plan gives you 10 licenses. So if you're a little bit bigger, you get access to those 10 licenses and that's to update and change files. And we can create custom enterprise plans as well. If you're bigger and you have a lot of PMs out there that need right, to have right. access on this, sure. as many uh, tr trades can scan this as you want. Right. So there's no license restrictions on the actual files for viewing. It's yeah. only for uploading. So if yeah, you're a small yeah. builder, we have an affordable tier for you, no problem. And you guys are builders too. Like you're living and breathing, Stephanie does, right? Stephanie's a builder, yeah. yeah, we yeah. Have, definitely have a builder that's part of it. Uh, we, I come from MedDevice and Shalom, my partner, comes from software. Yeah. So we worked with the community and said, hey, what do you guys want us to build? And you guys spoke, so here it is. How do they get a hold of you? Find me at steve at jobsitecodes.com. Jobsitecodes.com. All right, everybody, I guess I was muted. So, hey, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed that show. Uh, apologize for the mute there. Uh, we have been traveling all over the last few weeks covering the International Builder Show as well as covering uh, the Advancing Prefabrication Show where you find so many of the big, big uh, builders and MEP contractors. DPR uh, was there. Brian Wood was there. Mod Logic was there uh, at Advancing Prefab. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully they won't. Uh, cover those same shows again. Uh, at the same time, again, we don't need that. I hope you enjoyed this quick update and everybody got to see uh, what was happening at the International Builder Show. Some awesome, awesome uh, products out there. I love the robot that lays shingles on the roof. So check out more of that. We got a lot of content uh, over the last week and a half here. So we're going to be bringing it to you and updating you. And guess what? We're heading to World of Modular in just a, uh, just a few weeks down in Orlando. So, hey, let us know if you're going to be there. Uh, and with that said, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And, hey, make sure you say thanks to these sponsors as well. My name's Dave Cooper. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye now. What an amazing show.
Thank you to all of our sponsors for helping us to continue to bring all of these innovative conversations to all of you out there. Please visit them, see what they have to offer you. And as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel and ring that bell. It would mean the world to us. I'm Dave Cooper. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.